also one of my closest friends, at least in my mind, he can probably differentiate on his opinion, <laughs> is Mike Littlewood, the head baseball coach of BYU Baseball back in Studio B. Coach, nice to have you back. I'm with you. Best, best buds. Best buds, yeah. yeah. It would be weird if you said no. Yeah, it would be awkward. <laughs> we can be, so awkward. We can be a three-man wolf back if you want. <laughs> okay, so I go on vacation. Jeremy and Jason are here holding down the fort. And then everything. Fort B. Yeah. Things go, things go a little bit awry. I'm, so I'm going to take the blame for you losing the series for me not being on BYU Sports. Thank I you. I apologize. For we not- were we were actually blaming you, so I'm glad you <laughs> I'm glad you took it. Cursing your name in the night. Exactly. Minute. Spencer Linton. Now, the mustaches for the most part have survived. What's the deal? I thought the mustaches were gone once you lost the series. How? Explain all of that. You know, Jason Shepard asked me that after after yesterday's practice in an interview, and I said I have no clue. I'm the last guy who knows about anything with mustaches, <laughs> and I I don't even get involved with it. I really don't. I. I don't know. I, yesterday, I see some guys are, are shaved and some guys are a little unkempt. I don't. I really don't know what's going on. Um, I, I might have to find that out today. Wait. So I, I thought the team like, you know, gathered and they decided, okay, we're gonna do this or not. Some guys have shaved yeah. though, right? Yeah. I, I think four or five guys yesterday shaved. I, I really don't know. I'm not in on those conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were One just bit. kidding. I, I really don't know. I thought it was a joke. It I has, wrote it in my journal and everything. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Okay, yet, yet for the first time all year, you lose the series, which is unbelievable that it took until April to lose the series. Yet it was tightly contested. What did you learn about the St. Mary's series? It was. I mean, we learned St. Mary's is a really good team. We faced Corbin Burns on Thursday. We knew he was going to be a, a good pitcher. Uh, he's better than we thought. Uh, we faced him last year. We chased him after three innings here at Miller Park. But, I mean, he was 94-95 with his fastball. His slider was really good, and his changeup was probably his best pitch. We actually chased him after six innings. We, one thing our team does is we'll, you know, we'll, we'll push that other opposing team's pit, pitch count up. And he had a, about 100 pitches after six innings, and we chased him, had a 3-1 lead going into the seventh and just couldn't hang on. All three of those games, and we, we could have won all three games. We could have lost all three games, and, and it, could, it just could have gone either way. Two really, really good teams playing at their field. I felt that that Saturday win that we got was one of the toughest wins that I've had to get as a head coach ever, and I know our team feels the same way, just against all odds and shows the character of our guys. Just just kind of escape out of there with a win, and we ran home as fast as we possibly could. The script was flipped in that you have had great success on Thursday and Friday in conference series and then struggled a little bit on Saturday. And so is that what you're referencing when you say, you know, against all odds, you had lost two on Thursday and Friday and then well, you find a way on Saturday? It just it kind of felt like the momentum was was against us. They had they had everything. They were getting the big hits and we were hitting line drives right at people and, and you know, we were on on Friday we make five errors and that that's just uncharacteristic of our team and so it just felt like you know, I would, if I was a betting man, I would 100 to 1 odds that we would have lost that game. I mean, mm. just the way it felt. And so to come back and, and, and play w- well uh, to get – and that Connor Williams only lasted two and a third. And so Bo Burrup came in and gave us some good innings out of the pen. And just a lot of encouraging things uh, about, about Saturday's win. It was just a really satisfying win for us. How did your team react to losing a series? Um, you know – you, you, you honestly, you know what's going to happen. I mean, you just can't go through an, an entire season and not lose a series. I mean, that's just not going to happen. I felt like we, we played well those three games, and the team's mature enough that they're going to they're gonna come back. We had a good practice yesterday, short and quick, and got a lot of work done. That's, just, that's our team. We'll, we'll show up Friday, uh, play a good Creighton team. They're ranked 25th in, in, in one poll. They're really good. Uh, so it's going to be a, a nice challenge for us. Taking on the Creighton Blue Jays in Provo for three, one on Friday, two on Saturday. Uh, how did that three-game series uh, come to be about with uh, a team out of the Big East? Well, we so we played Creighton two years ago. We ended up playing them down in St. George, or maybe three years ago. It might have been our first year here. We there was about 15 inches of snow here, so we moved to St. George. Had a great <laughs> uh, we had a, a great series with those guys, and then. Um, we had this week open for finals, and we, it, man, it was just kind of magical. Trent Pratt does our scheduling, and they called and said, hey, it looks like you've got this open. Can we come in on a Friday, Saturday, and play three games? And we're like, yeah, that's perfect because we have finals, and finals will be over. And so it just fit in, fit in absolutely perfect. Usually we would just take this week off, and that's what we were planning on doing until Creighton called, and we worked that out. So it was great, great series for us. You hope to go kind of visit campus there later uh, in, like, June, right, is the hope? Omaha. Yeah, we hope. Yeah, we sure <laughs> hope. Yeah, at least 
TD Ameritrade, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. no doubt. I don't yeah, know about li- campus, but yeah, walk around there yeah. ish. Yeah. I'd like to go to Omaha other than the home run derby for Colton Shaver. I'd I'd like to go actually play in a couple games there. Yeah, that's where the college world series is. Um, do you think they have any revenge for the NIT? Do you, do you have to? You oh, know, I'm sure friend? they do. No doubt. I'm sure that's Dave Rose on the forefront of their minds. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to get it back for the basketball guys. Yeah, there's man. no doubt that's, like, that's right there. Wait, what happened? <laughs> now, you will face this team uh, without three key guys. Brendan Anderson still banged up a little bit. Kyle Dean still dealing with the back issue. And now Maverick Buffo uh, is uh, out of the lineup as well. What can you, can you give us an injury update on those three guys and how things are progressing? Yeah, well, Kyle Dean, uh, he's he's – out for another couple weeks where he's just wearing a brace and he's not doing anything and trying to get his back better and then he'll start going. Uh, Brennan Anderson w- won't play this week. He's got a torn ligament in his thumb. He's going to try to try to play this the rest of the season. We'll find out. You know, he, it, you can move his thumb backwards like a Gumby thumb. I mean, you can just move Ooh. it anywhere you want. But Fun. it'll be some pain, but he's going to try to play starting next week, so we'll see about that. Uh, Maverick's got a little bit of a strained forearm, so he won't play this week. Connor Williams has a little bit of a strain in his elbow. He won't. Just precautionary, we'll keep him out. Uh, so Hayden Rogers and Jordan Wood will get starts on on Saturday, with along with Mike Rucker on Friday. Guys just have to step up. I mean, it's uh, this is a huge RPI weekend for us, and uh, you know it's kind of like a in baseball, it's a war of attrition. You play this many games, um, 56 games in three and a half months. Guys are going to get banged up, and Colton Shaver's got a little bit of a wrist injury, and um, baseball guys are pretty tough they'll go in there and they'll play hurt Hayden Nielsen's got a little bit of a sore arm I mean those are just things you have you have to get through in baseball you know they're going to happen you just hope they're not season endings type things you know and we've had a couple of those but hey we'll battle do coaches get injuries mid-season as well only shoulders and and arms (laughs) shoulders and elbows I'm I'm sore every single day and I'm Trent's Trent's younger than me but we, we we're the two that throw BP and I used to be able to throw BP every single day, and I'm I'm down to about twice a week right now. It's like, <laughs> nope, can't feel my elbow today. I better not throw. So, uh, but hey, we're JT, our pitching coach had had his knee scoped yesterday. So yeah, pit, coaches get hurt just along, right along with the players. And, yeah, I know this Rehab. isn't a, I know this isn't a conference <laughs> series with Creighton, but what kind of importance are you placing on it other than RPI and all that? I mean, how do you how do you prepare your team for this, knowing that? Hey, we want to win the conference championship. That's priority number one. But then we, we want to have good seating for the NCAA tournament as well. Yeah, well, it, it's huge as far as RPI. They've got a higher RPI than us, a couple, you know, a couple spots. And so it's, it's huge that way. They can gain more by beating us here at home. But we, we can still hold our own and, and uh, climb in the RPI. But uh, the, the main thing is we want to play better than we've been playing. We, we've been playing okay, but five errors on Friday is not, not us. Um, our pen did a, a little bit better job. We need to kind of sh- – and guys will get an opportunity to throw this week with those two guys out. But uh, we just want to play well. I, we really do. Gonzaga's a really good team. I mean, I think Gonzaga, St. Mary's are, are two of the best teams in this league. And, and so, fortunately, we get to play them here. But we want to we want to get some momentum going into Tuesday with Utah Valley and then into that series, uh, obviously a huge one with Gonzaga. Is your team more or less focused – with uh, in school or out of school because certain people are more focused with the structure of class and then others are like no I'd rather just focus on baseball because today is the last day of finals you're going to have the full attention of your guys pretty soon yeah usually what we do this time of year is we'll, we'll practice at 11 a.m. so it makes the guys get up and then they'll lift right after practice and and uh, you know by then they don't really want to go back to bed someone probably do but they're up and doing doing their own thing I think traditionally we played better at the end of the season so uh, you know it, it's just they have to just adapt to the to the daily schedule and the daily grind. I think if you ask them, they would much rather not go to class and just play baseball. <laughs> I mean, it's got more of a pro type feel. Go to the park, get your work done, go do your thing, and come back tomorrow and do it again. I, yep. I like how the football team like practices at six, and then the ba- Mike's like, "Yeah, we're gonna make them get up at 11 <laughs> for practice." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You have an interesting job, as does Dave Rose and now Kalani Satake and that football staff in managing expectations for players coming out of high school going on missions and in baseball's case major league ambitions as well and so there's an article in the washington post uh, about pete nielsen and matt favero a couple of guys coming to play baseball and and how they're balancing all of that so i want to get your perspective on what it's like to balance the future ambitions of guys that might want to get drafted and not come to byu How, how do you handle all of that well, fortunately, my first 10 years in college baseball was down at Dixie, and we were junior college, and I believe in the first 10 years we had 
over 50 guys drafted in those 10 years. And so we had them coming and going. And, and at that level, it was coming in for a year, maybe, maybe two, no more than two. And then they're gone. And we would, we would really try to recruit those draftable kids. So we, we kind of got an idea. The biggest thing right now is for any high school kid that's going to get drafted, and I've been through it personally with Marcus, my son in 2010, who was, who was drafted in the second round, you have to put value on yourself. It's got to be life-changing money. Um, life-changing money in 2010 is a little bit, you know, it's different now. Um, and to me, life-changing money is millions because in baseball, there's no guaranteed contracts like that. I mean, you get a bonus, but then, uh, uh, you know, Marcus is probably making 1500 a month right now for, for the, only the months that they play. In the minor wow. leagues, you're only making money when you're, you don't get paid during spring training. So it's when your season starts to when the season ends. So it's not like that money that you get is going to be, you're going to use it. I mean, you're going to put that away and, and it's almost like you're working life in reverse. It's okay. You, now you've got your retirement. You still have to work your entire life. And so my thing is put value on yourself. Don't undervalue yourself and sign for just a couple hundred thousand. There's so much, so many more benefits to going to college and not having to work those couple of years through the minor leagues, but it's tough. And it's something we do in baseball and, and you throw the missions in there and it's just a lot of planning. And then on, uh, when the draft comes up, you cross your fingers and hope. I've met uh, – I, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, he graduated from the same high school di I did, and he said that he developed the Excel spreadsheet that the football team uses for missions and organizing that. Do you ha How do you organize who's coming in and out and JC guys and draft and all that? Yeah, we, we use the, the same thing, um, and it's, it, it's, a, it's a great program. But um, it's – you know, in my, I usually just keep it in my mind. It, I, I kind of know – who's coming, who's going. And the biggest thing is scholarships and who do you save scholarships for? And if he leaves, then, you know, it, it, it's really tricky. And, and there's some tough conversations you have to have once in a while. But the biggest thing for us is we, we have communications with major league teams. We kind of know, you know, the players, the high school players might be told something, one thing like, hey, you're going to be a first rounder. When you, we can call people and we'll know. We can call scouting directors and They'll say, yeah, he's projected maybe here, and, and it might be the 10th or 11th round or, or something like that. So we'll have a pretty good idea of where a guy's going to go. Same with our guys, with Rucker and Lund and Brennan, you know, uh, or uh, Bronson Larson. Our draftable guys, we, we kind of have an idea of where they're going to go. Some, it, it's not a perfect science, but we'll have an idea exactly where, you know, they're going to go in the draft and what we need to do to plan for the future. Mike, always great to have you in Studio B. I, I'm, I'm back. I'm here for the duration of the week, at least. So happy to see you. <laughs> so I'll try. I, I was going to really be so disappointed. Between you two, I right? was going to be so disappointed to see Jason sitting there. I was like, I see you every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're there anyway. Yeah. You listening to that, Shep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he feels great right I'll now. See him in, I'll see him in an hour. <laughs> Good luck against Creighton, Coach. Thanks for having me, guys. Up